I really like the pattern on the deck. Excuse you. Hi boy, have fun. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan, and today I'm gonna be looking at the Hi Boy KS4 electric scooter. At 500 US dollars, it's a budget-friendly option that's a little bit on the small side. Compared to many of the other scooters in this segment, it's short on range and a little low on power. So can you use this scooter to commute, or is it better off being used as a toy or just something to mess around with? We're gonna take a look next on Now Let's Review. All right, so here we are with the Hi Boy KS4 electric scooter, and I'm gonna talk about everything, of course, but let's start off with the looks. I like the color scheme a lot. I like black and red and, and white and everything. I really like the pattern on the deck. Excuse you. I really like the pattern on the deck. One of the things about the looks that I don't really like is the cable management. This does have a lot of exposed wires. Uh, many of the other scooters I've been testing recently have been doing a better job at hiding these cables or integrating them into the stem so that even when you fold it down, they're still in there. Hi boy, have fun. So let's get right into some of the specs. This has a 36 volt, 7.5 amp hour lithium ion battery that gives this a claimed max range of 13.6 to 17 miles. Now when I tested the range of this, I ended up with 13.1 miles and it could barely make it back. I was going mostly top speed and full throttle up and down a couple hills, but for the most part it was relatively flat ground that I was testing it on. So I probably, if I was a little more conservative with the riding, could have squeezed the full 13.6 miles out of it, but I really don't think I would have gotten 17 no matter what. That battery powers this 350 watt hub motor on the front wheel. That 350 watt motor brings us up to a top speed of 19 miles an hour. At speed, it's pretty stable. Um, no issues as far as stability. It's super easy to make uh, tight turns with this. Let's do an acceleration run. We'll do zero to top speed, so 20. Uh, you do have to push off with the scooter. It's not a zero start. So ready, here we go. This is like, it's, it's what you'd expect from a scooter like this. It's nothing exciting. Uh, it's just, it gets up and goes, and there's top speed. So pretty typical stuff in terms of acceleration. Going up this hill, again, I measured this hill at like four degree incline, and then it increases to about a five or so as we get further up. So that's about a 7% grade up to about an 8.75% grade. Not the steepest hill, but it's just a good hill to test these things on and it's consistent. It's a nice long hill too. So I'm gonna go, of course, full throttle in the sport mode, see how it does getting up this hill. Definitely not too happy going up this hill. It's accelerating still, but it was a struggle for this thing to get going and it is definitely taking its sweet time accelerating up the hill. And we've kind of leveled off at 14 miles an hour. On the screen here, uh, this display, this little bar right here, is a measure of how much power you're putting out. When it gets into the red, you know you're really pushing the motor hard. So when I'm using the brakes, I hope it shows up, but you can see the little orange indicator right there. That's how much regen it's putting in. So it is cool to be able to see that on the screen. So the tires on this scooter are 8.5 inch solid tires, so you don't have to worry about punctures. Uh, but of course, solid tires don't have the same kind of shock absorption as pneumatic tires do. Now, this does have shock absorption because there is technically a swing arm here. The rear wheel is all on a pivoting swing arm and I'm putting up some slow motion shots of me jumping on it right now and you can see that it does compress but it really only compresses when I jump on it full force like that. This is not actually doing anything when you're riding no matter what. There's absolutely no dampening or shock absorption of any kind. It's, it's just a gimmick that they can say this scooter has. Ride comfort and quality with this scooter is a little bit disappointing, I have to be honest, because it's so small and because it has solid tires and no real shock absorption, it is definitely a rough ride. I wear size 11s and look at how cramped my feet are on the deck of this scooter. I don't know how adults are supposed to comfortably ride this scooter, but it is just way too small. Noise is good, this is a very quiet scooter. You can hear a little bit of a whine uh, at lower speeds, but it's very quiet for the most part. So I actually do like the handlebar height of this scooter. I, I reach down a little bit to the handlebars. I'm 5'9", so average height. And uh, yeah, I think it's comfortable. In all honesty, the build quality seems to be all right. Like it doesn't seem bad. 
while we're back here, let's talk about the brakes. This does have mechanical disc brakes in the back that blend with regen brakes from the motor. The regen brakes are actually pretty strong on this. Something else this scooter does that I guess is a good safety measure, but I don't, I'm not super fond of is the fact that when you're going downhill, even if you're coasting, the motor kicks in with regen brakes to keep you from exceeding 20 miles an hour. So with that in mind, 20 miles an hour, full brakes now. It's actually less effective to go full brakes than it is to just do some brakes because I locked up the back tire and it was just sliding. But the regen brakes on this are actually quite strong and they contributed a great deal to slowing me down there. So that's actually good. You don't really have to use the actual disc brakes a whole lot with this scooter. This scooter has a maximum rider weight of 220 pounds, which is a lot lower than many of the other scooters that we've tested that are in the same kind of category with the 350 to 500 watt hub motor. It is IPX4 water resistant, so that kind of means if you get stuck in a little bit of a drizzle or you know, if the, the road's wet or whatever, it's not gonna matter too much, but just don't go riding out in the pouring rain. Folding the scooter down is very easy. There's a little uh, tab here you gotta pull up and then you can undo the latch. Once you undo the latch, see this hook here, you're gonna use that to connect to this little uh, latch on the rear fender. Once that's latched on there, you're good to go. Once it's folded down, it's very easy to pick up and carry and move around. This does weigh 32.6 pounds, so definitely on the lighter side for electric scooters of this category. And then unfolding is just as easy. You just undo the little latch on the rear fender there, lift it back up, and then redo this latch here. Good to go. Very, very simple. If we take a look at the screen here, it's pretty simple. It shows your ride mode, so there's S, and then D uh, shows your speed, your battery level here. And then also if you single press, you have a headlight indicator that pops up. If you triple press this button, that toggles on and off cruise control. Now it doesn't turn it on and off while you're riding. It just toggles the ability for you to use it. So when it's on, you will see this little speedometer thing flashing. When it's off, it will go away. Look at that, it actually beeps to let you know when cruise control is activated. All I had to do is just hold the throttle down for like 10 seconds, I think. I heard that double beep. And now, obviously, not touching the throttle and still going. And then to disengage cruise control, you either tap the throttle again or the brakes. Either way, we'll disengage it. Display is pretty easy to see. Uh, it does get a little difficult at times to see in direct sunlight, but overall, it's fairly easy to read in most environments. Handlebars are fairly comfortable, pretty typical, just simple rubber grips. Typical mechanical brake feel, really no complaints there. Your typical adjustability as well. It's got a bell. So this does have a headlight in the front, uh, which appears to not be working on ours for some reason. I will investigate that. And it also has a functional brake light on the back. Look at that. So even when the headlight's off, if you squeeze the brakes, it will still light up. If you have the headlight on, it's an always on light, but when you squeeze the brakes, it flashes. So whether or not you have the headlights on, this will indicate when you are braking. Always like to see that. So in addition to the headlight and the taillight on this scooter, if we turn the lights out, you can see these super cool red deck lights on both sides of the scooter. It looks really cool in the dark. I have to have a light on over here because otherwise the camera will not focus, but this is just to give you an idea of how it looks in the dark. It's really cool. So you can get a Hi Boy app that you can use to connect to the scooter via Bluetooth. It allows you to lock and unlock your scooter. You can see riding status. Uh, you can control cruise control somehow and view your battery capacity. And I think I covered just about everything as far as specs, but in case I missed something or in case you wanna check all the detailed dimensions and all that for yourself, I'm gonna put up a screenshot so you can pause the video and look through those. In conclusion, who is this scooter for? I don't really know. I think it's for a very small, lightweight adult who has a very short commute or for kids or like older kids that want an electric scooter just to have fun with those would be good options i guess but also if you're really looking to get a scooter that you want to commute on if you just spend like a hundred to two hundred more dollars you can get something that's way more viable as a legitimate form of transportation now by no means do i think the high boy ks4 is a bad scooter but i think the performance the range and the overall smaller size means that it's not the ideal scooter for a lot of people not to say that this scooter couldn't work for some people, but for 150 or so dollars more than this, there are some great options for commuters. As a scooter you would use just for fun or as a toy for older or taller kids, I think this would actually be a great option. 
And real quick before we wrap this up, I wanna give a shout out to Lumos Helmets for partnering with us. They make these awesome bike helmets that have integrated headlights and taillights as well as directionals. Some of their models like this, which is the Lumos Matrix, have MIPS, which is an added safety liner inside the helmet to help further reduce concussions and head injury. If you wanna pick up one of these amazing helmets for yourself, head on over to lumoshelmet.co and use the code now you know Lumos at checkout to get a discount on your order. Well, anyways, that wraps it up for this review of the High Boy KS4. Leave this video a like if you like the video or the scooter and you found it helpful. Also, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of this scooter. Also, if you're interested in buying the scooter, make sure you use the link down below. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Now let's review.